Fabrics, thanks for tuning in. What you're going to see here is how to fabricate a structural column for your basement support beams. Um, in this particular incident, there's temporary lolly columns there that are adjustable and they're not code approved. They're hollow, um, not a very good fix. They could be moved, they could be knocked out of the way. So the resolution to this is to replace it with a structural column something that's permanent, something that's bolted to the floor, also bolted to the beam above. Okay, there are four in place that we're gonna be replacing. Um, but what I'm trying to do here is just show you a quick idea of how to fabricate this and what you can use to fabricate. So what I use, and I use this based on an engineer uh, recommendation. Uh, we've done several support jobs and structural support jobs, and he always calls for quarter inch by four by four inch structural solid steel channel. So if you look through this, you'll see all the way down the other end. Okay, here's the thickness of it. It is a quarter inch. It is very, very heavy. This comes in a 10 foot length. Now I have wandering lengths here. It's a small basement. My highest post is 75 inches. Everything else there, you know, deviates a quarter inch plus or minus. So the idea in this is to be able to put something that's positively solid, something that can't be kicked away, something that's more than beefy enough to support the load of living room, living room furniture, live load, the whole bit. Okay, so this is just to satisfy a CO because they failed it for the columns. They want something permanent. So there's two options. There's this that you could fabricate, and I'll show you how to do it quickly. And then there's what's called an FHA rated um, four inch round cement fill column. So in either case, cement fill column or square channel column, they're still cutting. In that instance where they're round, you do it with a race ring cutter and then you snap the concrete. You still need to do plate work. Plate work is top and bottom plate that you allow for bolting in. So I'll show you briefly here. Here are pre-cuts. Now, when I cut this steel, there's a couple different ways to do this before I show you the pre-cut. One way, the fastest way, is probably settling torch, burn, throw it, gives you a nice cut. Um, maybe not as clean, a little more jagged. Um, I like to use the Sawzall with a high-grade steel bit. It does take a little bit of effort. I mean, I've been out here for an hour, and I cut four columns, and so far, four plates. Okay, I've got another 15 minutes to cut four more and I'm done. So it is a little bit of work. It's, it's uh, you know, not something you're going to do in five minutes. You do have to do all the prep work. So we have four columns standing up, one laying, and now we have plates. Now plate steel, I'll get a roller here for you, is a little bit different. So here we know you have four okay and i'm trying not to shake the hammer much by four and if you look at the steel itself that's going to come in at roughly a quarter inch okay structural steel all right this is the way i like to do it because i can control the welds i can control the cuts it, it's a little easier for me to prefab everything now when you get into your plate steel your plate steel Okay, and by the way, a uh, 10 foot steel column probably will run you about $118 from a steel supplier. You have to call and get quotes. Oh, I'm sorry, channel, channel steel. So plate steel, a little bit different. Same thing now. It's basically a quarter inch, okay, by six inch. Length can be determined by you. We use eight inch. And let me switch hands here. Again, I'm trying not to bebop this camera all over and make you sick. If you follow this down. So what we do here is just scribe out eight inches. Now the reason I use eight inches is I'm gonna show you. We're gonna be welding this plate onto here. And as you can see, on six inch, it gives me one inch top, one inch underneath bottom, but it gives me two inch on the left, two inch on the right. Okay, so your beam above would run this way. 
that gives me more than enough room to bore two holes in this plate for bolting one here and one here we'll get into that later the idea is i have two bolts here two bolts here that's going to go into the floor when you do the other plate and you weld it on you're going to have two bolts here two bolts here they're going to sink up into the wood on a cross member beam that supports the center of the house so the idea is to make this cut as decent as you can get it and as you can see for a sawzall freehand not so bad okay so it does take a little bit of work but that's what you want to do to try to get this and then when we get ready to, to tack weld this we're going to put a full bead weld all the way around this but we're going to have to tack it to get it to stay first okay so let me finish my cut up and then we'll be back for the second part of this video okay here's the quick last part of this job and what you can see and i'm not going to show you how to weld if you don't know how to weld or have a weld or you probably shouldn't be doing this work anyway but just to give you a quick idea so we have our columns now pre-measured we've got a little tolerance for height and distance and now you can see plates are welded on so now the only thing lacking from this job right at this point in time are the double holes here double holes over here and that's for ceiling and for base okay and basically that's about it so we have four columns here ready to go and ready to be installed and because these are all different sizes each one is numbered one two three four so i know where to put them in place based on how i measured okay and that's the finished product Again, if you don't have a welder, you can buy one. I like to use a little mini. You can get for about $200 at the box store. Thanks for viewing.